Hi folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatoria. So this is my falchion. The blade is modelled on the Conyers falchion and the hilt is more or less modelled on the Clooney falchion, both 13th century falchions. What I'm looking at here is um, experiments in how to move the sword and how to cut with this sword. It's, uh, it's not a type of sword that a lot of people in HEMA are using. There are no texts for its use. Um, that is, there are no treatises or manuals for how to use this type of sword, although it is similar to the German Langsmesser. And here I'm going through some motions that are inspired by German Langsmesser or Messer sources, such as Talhofer, Palace Kahl, Codex Wallerstein, and such like. Before I start cutting, I always like to do some basic solo exercises, just moving the weapon and reminding myself how that specific weapon moves, how it can move, how it could be moved. You'll notice that I have my left arm behind my back, as you'll find in the German Messer treatises, that keeps it out of the way. And I'm experimenting with turning, basic footwork, passing footwork, turning, this kind of thing. I'm cutting a mixture of cutting from the wrist, cutting from the elbow and cutting from the shoulder. This is my first cut at what lots of people would call a pool noodle or insulation pipe. It's a very light target. I actually found this very difficult to cut with this falchion. The falchion moves relatively slowly, but having a lot of mass near the tip hits with a lot of force. Pool noodles or insulation foam are very very light, they are a very light target, lighter than anything that you would really be hitting in combat in general. Um, and really it seems to be that a light fast sword is much better for cutting these kind of noodles than um, a heavier slower sword. So on to the water bottle. I line up the cut, a simple downwards cut from the right and it goes straight through. The heavier target of the water bottle seems to work far better with this type of relatively heavy slow sword. You'll notice the position I finish in there is a guard. I started with the uh, guard position with the sword over my right shoulder. Now I'm doing it from my left shoulder. And you'll notice the finishing positions as well are also guard positions. They all have names in their relevant systems. So this is cutting downwards from the left hand shoulder and straight through. In actual fact, this time it didn't go all the way through the target, but it was a clean cut. It just didn't quite go deep enough to make its way through to the back of the bottle. This time starting from a guard position known as ox, and the cut naturally throws through through to the sort of low left hand guard that goes by various names in different sources. Checking my distance as well there and straight through. So really this type of sword is supposed to be used with a shield. It's a 13th century sword and this is a large 13th century so-called heater shield. And whilst I've been using Langsmesser techniques to use the um, sword by itself Really, this type of sword is intended to be used with a shield pretty much all the time. Just practicing some motions, reminding myself of how it is to have that shield and that sword in my hands, remembering that you can only cut from certain angles because the shield prevents you from cutting from all of the angles that you could cut from if you've only got a sword in your hand. Equally, the footwork is a little bit different because generally speaking, you want to have the shield leg forward most of the time. If you bring the, uh, the right hand foot forwards too much, it presents too much of the sword arm forward of the shield and makes it vulnerable. So I'm starting off with a cut from my left shoulder over my shield arm. This is known as sopra braccio in the Bolognese sources. And there we go, it went clean through and I managed to get a second cut from the right shoulder passing. I like to practice as many cuts as possible while I'm actually moving because I've, I, it just feels more like fighting footwork. It feels more like something similar to what you actually get in fighting and in sparring. So cutting from the right hand shoulder now, and obviously you have to be careful not to hit your own shield. 
moving around for the camera's benefit in this case. And straight through, and amazingly, it still stayed standing on my very wobbly stand. There we go. So these cuts are very simple cuts, but again, they're very important. I'm trying to do it on the move. You'll notice at the moment when I'm impacting the target, I'm usually moving to the left or the right, or I'm moving straight forwards in some cases. And obviously I'm trying to keep my shield in front of me, so it's providing protection. I don't want it to go behind me. I'm keeping the shield in front, but also trying not to hit the shield as I do the cut. You'll notice that doing these motions naturally leads to certain logical guard positions and movements of the weapon. If you have a large shield and you have a sword and you want to swing it and cut things effectively, there are only certain movements which are really logical. These are very basic things and there are more complicated motions and combinations of motions that you could do. However, these are the real kind of simple things that just are very obvious and generic to sword and shield combat. We know very little about sword and shield combat because there are very few sources for it, very few detailed sources. So we have to sort of use what we know from sword and buckler and other, other kind of systems to apply it to sword and shield combat. Practicing uppercuts from the outside, which is a little bit more unusual. Simple uh, direct cut into longer. So this has been my look at how this type of falchion could have been used to cut with a large shield and by itself in some cases. Cheers, guys. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, follow us on Facebook. You can buy t shirts through Spreadshirt, support us on Patreon, or follow us on Pinterest. Thank you.